Good morning learners today we are going to start with the first poem in our course which is called Wind this poem was written by Subramanya Bharti let's look at some of the biographical details Chinna Swami Subramanya Bharti he was born on December 11 1882 he was an Indian writer poet journalist an independence activist and a social reformer he belonged to the state of Tamil Nadu from India right let's look at some other details of his life He was very popularly known as Mahakavi Bharatiyar. Uh, he was a pioneer. Pioneer means the first person, the person, the most famous person of modern Tamil poetry. He is considered one amongst the greatest of Tamil literary figures of all time. So he originally wrote in the Tamil language. This poem that is in your course was originally written in Tamil also, and it was translated later by A K Ramanujan. His numerous works were fiery songs, kindling patriotism and nationalism. So because he was uh, an activist, the main themes in his poems were. patriotism and nationalism uh, he was born in tamil nadu his parents uh, parents his names are given here he was brought up by his father who wanted him to learn english excel in arithmetic and become an engineer you can look at his uh, family photo here and this is another photo uh, of subramanya swami okay so let's jump straight into the poem right now on your screens you can see the text of the poem right now You can do one thing you can pause the video right here and you can read it for yourself or you can read it along with me so let's start reading it wind come softly don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf there look what you did you threw them all down you tore the pages of the books you brought rain again you're very clever at poking fun at weaklings frail crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters crumbling wood crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts the wind god we knows and crushes them all he won't do what you tell him so come let's build strong homes let's join the doors firmly practice to form the body make the heart steadfast do this and the wind will be friends with us the wind blows out weak fires he makes strong fires roar and flourish his friendship is good we praise him every day now that we've read the poem let's analyze it line by line wind come softly don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf so here you see that the poet is addressing the wind directly the poet seems to be talking to the wind and he says wind come softly don't break the shutters of the windows don't scatter the papers don't throw down the books on the shelf so the poet is asking is requesting the wind to come softly to not break the shutters of the windows to not scatter the papers to not throw down the books which are kept there on the shelf but um, what happens in the in the in the next line look at the third and fourth line uh, the poet says the poet requests the wind to not throw down the books on the shelf and what does the wind do there look what you did you threw them all down so in the third line the poet requests the wind to not throw down the books but in the fourth line itself the wind throws down every book that's there on the shelf this means that the wind is not listening to the poet at all so the poet is requesting the wind to be soft to not be destructive but the wind is in no mood to listen to him it is scattering everything in its view it's uh, spoiling everything destructing every single thing including the books including the papers including the shutters everything that is in the wind's way will be shattered it looks like moving ahead you tore the pages of the books because the books fell down from the shelves so the books got torn the pages of the books got destroyed you brought rain again so the winds are so strong that they stirred up the clouds completely and they brought rain again you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings so in the above lines you see that the wind is Uh, coming across as a very very strong character right and it is destroying every single thing that comes in its way so the poet tells the wind to not poke fun at weaklings poke fun means to make fun of to laugh at uh, weaklings weaklings means 
uh, anything which is weak which is frail which is not so strong which will not be able to hold itself up against the wind so the poet asks the wind to not make fun of the weak things just because the wind is strong now the poet will name the weak things let's look at these frail crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters crumbling woods all of these things are frail frail means weak and crumbling means something which is just about to fall apart so the houses just are just about to crumble the doors are just about to come off uh, of the hinges the rafters rafters are uh, the uh, are uh, one of the you know wooden parts uh, which are used in the roofs of houses crumbling wood everything is uh, about to get crumbled crumbled by who by the mighty wind by the powerful wind because the wind is so strong so powerful uh, so mighty and uh, it's it's unrelenting it's not listening to anybody not even listening to the poet that's why it is uh, destroying everything including the houses the doors the rafters the roof everything crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts so if you look if you compare these two lines you will see that the poet first names four inanimate things inanimate meaning non living things so the wind is destroying every non living thing including houses doors and everything else but also it is uh, destroying human beings it is destroying bodies it is destroying people's lives it is destroying people's hearts so uh, the wind is not only uh, the wind that you uh, experience in your daily life wind is also a symbol of difficulties of problems that you face in your daily life which can you know crumble your heart crumble your life crumble your uh, you know uh, you as a human being crumble your body so um, a wind here is a symbol of all the difficulties that you face in your lives the wind god we knows and crushes them all so what does the wind god do he we knows and crushes them all who does he crush he crushes the doors the houses the rafters wood people their hopes their lives their hearts everything what does we knowing mean we knowing is the act of blowing very hard on grains so that their outer covers you know get blown off so the wind god is blowing so hard on people on things that uh, whoever is weak like the peels um, the outer covers of these grains they get uh, you know blown away by the winds itself moving on he won't do what you tell him so come let's build strong homes so now uh, previously the poet was talking directly to the wind now the poet is addressing the audience the poet is addressing you as people and he says to you he won't do what you tell him he is uh, telling you who is you here you are Uh, the audience you are who you who are listening to the poem right now he won't do what you tell him he will not listen to you so come let's build strong homes so he says that he will not listen to you when you tell him not to come and he will not listen to you when you tell him to come softly so what you need to do is that you need to bring uh, build strong homes let's joint the doors firmly let's you know close the doors so firmly that the wind is not able to enter and destroy our houses right practice to firm the body we should learn how to endure we should learn to make our bodies strong firm make the heart steadfast steadfast is uh, something which is immovable something which is very strong fixed which does not move so we have to make our heart stronger we don't have to get scared easily we have to be uh, free of all the fears so we have to make our heart stronger we have to make our body stronger and we also have to make sure that our houses are built in a very very strong manner do this and the wind will be friends with us so if you do all of that if you make sure that your house is Are strong if you make sure that your bodies are strong if you make sure that your hearts are very very strong and are able to endure the pain and are able to endure strong winds which are difficulties in your life if you are able to face all of the difficulties without fear in a very strong uh, manner then the wind will be friends with us then all these difficulties will become your friends how will the difficulties become your friends because they will help you learn something or the other every bad situation every uh, uh, problem will bring some opportunity some experience something to learn from it so the winds the difficult times the problems will become your friends because you will keep on learning things from all of these 
बैड थिंग्स राइट सो द विंड विल बिकम फ्रेंड्स विद अस द विंड ब्लोज आउट वीक फायर्स ही मेक्स स्ट्रॉन्ग फायर्स रोर एंड फ्लरिश लाइक आई सेड द विंड ब्लोज आउट वीक फायर्स इफ यू आर वीक देन द विंड will completely blow you off or blow you off it means that the winds will kill you if you are weak but if you are a strong fire if you have made yourself mentally physically emotionally strong then the wind will help you to flourish to grow flourish means to grow to roar to roar like a lion roar is the sound produced by a lion his friendship is good we praise him every day so his refers to the wind so the poet says that his friendship is good uh, it is good to face difficulties in your life because if there are no difficulties then you will not learn anything you will not grow you will not become a better person if you're not uh, emotionally mentally physically strong then you will get killed by all of these obstacles that you face in life so it is good to be friends with these obstacles because they make you learn something every time they come in your life and these obstacles make you a better person make you a learn and make you a knowledgeable person every time they appear in your lives we praise him every day so we praise who every day we praise the wind every day because the wind symbolizes the problems the obstacles that come in your life and make you a better person every time they come moving ahead we have the rhyme scheme so this poem is written in a free verse if you uh, uh, look at the poem uh, there are no rhyming words in the poem it's written in free verse it does not follow any rhyming scheme let's discuss the poetic devices now what are poetic devices poetic devices are the devices or the techniques which are used by the poets to make their poet poems even um more impactful to uh, give them a sort of a beauty so these could be words these could be uh, lines these could be ideas that the poets use in their poems to make them even more impactful so first up we have personification what do we mean by personification personification is done when you give a human quality to something which is inanimate something which is non living so uh, supposing if there is uh, any uh, non living thing uh, supposing there is a tube light so uh, and if you say that the tube light is giving me uh, light so the tube light is not actually giving you anything right because giving is a quality which is only attributed to human beings that's when we say that it uh, it is personification let's look at the example here the wind has been personified in the poem when the poet says you are the poet is referring to the wind as a person so when the uh, poet he uh, repeatedly refers to the wind as you he keeps on referring to the wind as if it is a person right so that is one example of personification there are many other examples of personification let's look at the poem again to see these examples okay look closely he says uh, let's come to the fifth line look what you did look what you did he is talking to the wind as if it is a person you threw them all down so throwing is one thing which only humans can do but here the poet is talking to the wind and he is telling the wind that you threw them all down you tore the pages so tearing is one thing that only uh, it's a human uh, capability right but the poet says that the wind is tearing the pages you brought rain again so again uh, bringing rain is something that uh, wind cannot do because bringing is a verb which is usually associated with human beings right so uh, there are more such examples read the poem carefully and find out uh, these examples from the poem itself let's move ahead we have done personification now we will move ahead to repetition you can notice that the word crumbling has been repeated many times to lay emphasis crumbling doors crumbling houses crumbling rafters crumbling hearts crumbling bodies why does the poet repeat the word crumbling so much because so, so many times because the wind crushes everything that is weak and uh, the poet keeps using the word crumbling to emphasize on the fact that the uh, wind is very strong and it can destroy everything that comes in its way so to emphasize on the fact uh, that the wind is strong to um, express its power in a greater magnitude he keeps on repeating the word crumbling again and again let's move ahead symbolism like i told you in this poem the wind is a symbol it's not only uh, the the word wind does not only refer to the wind that you see in your daily life uh, it is 
a symbol a symbol which portrays the challenges and difficulties in life the troubles that you face in life the challenges that you face daily on a daily basis in different things in life so these things help you shine brighter these things are the things which test your mental emotional capabilities right so uh, here that's how the poet has used symbolism all right so that's about it thank you so much